Oh. <laughs> Why are some lights red and some green? <laughs> red means off. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I think there's a special. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just the color you got. You're the winner. <laughs> Port and starboard. <laughs> Port and starboard. <laughs> That's right for turning. <laughs> Yeah, call the meeting to order, and we take a roll call. <clears throat> Bonnie Elliott, James Langhorn, here. Ken McClellan, here. Stephen Metch, Juliet Sponsel, Vincent Wood, here. Marcia Zillis, here. Andrew Stuffler, here. Next item is approval for minutes from our last meeting on 10 1. Is there any comments? I make a motion we approve the minutes. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 At this point, we'll do uh, any public comments. Items not on the agenda? None? At this point, we will take the subject as hardship ratification for 36 West Valerio Street. Would staff like to present? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm Andrew Stuffler, the building official for the city, for those of you who don't know me. And for the record, um, so this you're, you're going to see three ratifications of hardship for accessibility compliance today. And um, one of our board members, uh, Bonnie Elliott, uh, is was sick today. She couldn't make it, but she did send me an email. I do want to share her her thoughts with you. They're very summary thoughts, but thoughts that to keep in your mind as far as her input on these items. So for all three of these, um, she said she had a lot of questions about the items and she was looking forward to the discussion um, that she won't be able to participate in being that she's sick. But she had concerns that um, items, um, her direct uh, quote here from her email is, I'm very concerned today's items are just another escape for not hiring people with disabilities in the future, no matter who owns the business or property. Um, so that's something for us to keep in mind um, as you're uh, listening to the hardship requests, ratification requests today from uh, one of our board members. So 36 West Valario, um, this is a property that um, is required by the city to put in a trash enclosed trash, um, a trash enclosure for the, the trash receptacles so that when the wind blows, the trash doesn't blow, the lids open on the receptacles and then you got trash and paper going everywhere and ends up in the storm drains and things like that. So this is a mandatory requirement the city puts on the property owner. They have to have an enclosure for their trash cans. In the course of them locating that on their site and putting and determining the best place to put the, lo the trash enclosure, they have to consider um, the con contract service provider for trash, co trash collections um, requirements, you know, you can't stash it away back in the corner of the property where they can't get to it or you pay extra fees to have them roll it out to the street. So there are uh, more constraints to consider than just simply building a trash enclosure. And one of those, um, one of those constraints or issues is the accessible route of travel to the trash enclosure. Um, we learned about a year ago that the, through the state and through the um, U.S. Uh, access board that trash enclosures are considered part of the work environment that needs to be on what's called the accessible route that people who have disabilities should be able to get to as an employee um, of that business or a member of that uh, apartment complex. They should be able to take their trash to the trash enclosure. There's no requirement for them to be able to actually put the trash in the trash receptacle, but they have to be able to get to the trash enclosure. So what we see in this case is um, an example of a property, you know, long time existing property um, that's now a bed and breakfast. Um, and they put the trash enclosure in their parking lot area, as you see on the site plans that were attached to the appeal form. And um, in the course of doing that and locating it in, the, in what they thought was the best practical location, um, all things considered, they um, also would have to change their route of travel and add um, I don't know how many lineal feet it is here, but a significant amount of 
walkway that meets the accessible route of travel requirements. And in doing so, it results in a project cost going from $5,100 to about $20,000. So uh, an extra $14,000 for the accessible route of travel requirements. The building code requires that at least 20% of a project be applied to improve accessibility, um, which would be about $1,000 on a $5,000 um, project. So they're, they're, they're requesting ratification of a hardship, hardship being that the cost of improving the route of travel to the trash enclosure is significantly more than 20%, and it's more in line with about 300% of the cost of the enclosure itself. Staff looked at it and staff um, agreed, and that's why we drafted the memorandum um, recommending uh, approval of a ratification to the board. Thank you for that. At this point, we'll any comments, um, questions of the board? Isn't this similar to the um, trash enclosure variance we had about three months ago? Was it uh, behind? It was behind State Street. Um, uh, I forgot the name of the business. It was some jeweler, if I remember right. Yes, it is. Um, well, you know, this is um, with the enlightenment of uh, and understanding that trash enclosures now are employee work areas that we have to provide ac assure access to. We're going to see more and more of this, especially in Santa Barbara, where our we have a lot of older properties, very tight um, constraints for where they can locate trash enclosures. Mm -hmm. um, elevated structures that are older, you know, that don't have ramps um, yet. So, so this is something that we're going to see, you know, fairly frequently. Uh, is, is, there, um, is there any kind of full set, size set that's around? It's hard to see where the trash enclosure is. I can't. I can't make out where it is. I see lifts. I see um, an existing brick. Oh walkway where they have to replace the brick that's maintenance that wouldn't be cost of I can uh, let me um, I can show you there's a couple different ways we have the plans we can put them on the big screen oh, okay or I can just point it out to you I'll point it out to you yeah it's better Yeah, I know. I'm just saying the, the word trash enclosure. What else? If you don't get into it, if you don't show it, because I have a lot of work. Yeah, but you have a bunch of spaces where they would have. How would you realize it's walk across the water? Yeah. Hold on just a minute. We're. Actually, ask you pretty soon to come up. To have into the mic so that way okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 We're just taking some questions right now from the board. All right. The question I have is this uh, walkway. Is it is the addition of the walkway is the that, that that that's the high expense item? Is that true? <laughs> Simon Dunstan appearing on behalf of the Cheshire Cat Inn. Okay. Um, the the walkway that goes straight down the center that you're seeing, and that towards the end there's some brickwork that you can see. That is existing now. Okay. And then it's the L shape that drops down to the bottom towards <laughs> Chapala, and then goes parallel to Chapala straight towards the trash enclosure. That is the new part that we're seeking to avoid having to construct. So how would you take the trash out? If you didn't put this in, you would 
I assume you just walk out into that parking lot and then just over to the trash, right? That is correct. You walk that diagonal across the parking lot to the trash can, which is only about 25 feet, I believe. The issue with regard to the ADA and the reason that that is not being, uh, why it's not allowed on its on its face, is that um, you would have to walk behind two uh, parking spots. And so what we're doing by, you know, if we were to add this additional construction, we would be having a more direct shot across that um, driveway, if you will. So if that answers your question. Yeah. I would, I would also add um, that the, the driveway itself and the parking area, the, le the elevations of that probably don't meet the 2% cross slope requirement for accessible routes of travel. So they would have, that would be complicated for them to try to regrade or redefine that parking area so that they could have 2% maximum cross slope from the, the point where that, that kind of core walkway terminates to over to the trash enclosure, going across the parking area, the drive aisle. So you're saying it, it can't be here. It used to be here. It can't be here. Well, it, it, it can be there, but it doesn't meet the definition of an accessible route of travel due to the cross slope of it. Right. And then it also would run, it would also have the accessible route of travel go behind parking spaces that are not the accessible spaces, and that's prohibited in the, in the access provisions of the building code. They don't allow, the state doesn't allow the accessible route of travel through a parking lot to go behind non-accessible parking stalls so that if someone were using it and someone put their car in reverse and didn't see them, they, maybe they had a van, they would they mm -hmm. go over them. Jim? Uh, Mr. Question? Chair, a couple of questions for the applicant. I'm trying to gain some uh, perspective as to uh, the, uh, the significant uh, percentage, that is, what uh, these improvements that are as built for this trash enclosure represent what percentage of the overall project? It says here that $115,000 worth of barrier removal have already been done. We're talking to numbers of 4,000, 4,500, or 15,000. So, so where does this all fit in the overall scheme of what we're looking at? Well, I, if I may, I think that those um, comments were really addressing some other work that the applicant has done. The, the trash enclosure is a separate project and has been deemed a separate project. And so what we're really looking at is the 40, the, the close to $5,000 it would take to construct, uh, and which has already been uh, done, the actual trash enclosure itself, and now with regard to the accessible path. At the main building, there was some other work done, which is a separate project where we put a lift in for an accessible lift into the Victorian building. Um, and they made significant changes uh, to and oh, made yeah. an ADA accessible guest room uh, with shower and toilet and all those sort of things. And so that is the, the cost that you're looking at with regard to the global project. Um, we're speaking really right now just about the, um, the trash right. enclosure at the back. And also staff has uh, kindly pointed out that we have uh, agreed to put in what we would call a satellite uh, trash area near the... Um, the lift that you see. So if indeed we did have an employee who needed uh, accessibility benefits, they could take the trash to that particular facility. Of course, when in regard to the management of the inn, it would still require an adi a different person to, you know, whether it be once a day or whatever time, to take that satellite trash out to the main trash can. And that is something that we deemed uh, a way to at least allow the inn to hire uh, an individual that was uh, uh, needed ADA benefits, if indeed such an individual qualified for other, you know, uh, reasons at the bed and breakfast. Um, so we think that that is a pretty reasonable um, solution to the problem, but really significantly the cost, and, and let me point out one other thing, not just the cost of this path, which is significant, but it also cuts significantly into the garden itself. And uh, so there's another loss, and We'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Have they separated out what the maintenance issues are, or is these, are all of these doing in an attempt to make it compliant? Certain ones here, like it says, um, 
something about saw cut walk at nearest grout line replace slab and confirm with arbors to shave off portion of root but it's supposed to be an existing walkway or is that new i believe and and um i believe what we're looking at is the main path okay that you're looking at down the center some changes needed to be made to the main path but that has nothing to do with the trash enclosure. Okay. That has to do with the bed and breakfast itself being ADA compliant okay. for guests. Okay. And so a guest may come from the parking uh, facility all the way down that main path <coughs> to the bed and breakfast itself. And so I think those are the changes okay. there that we're not discussing as part of Okay, that. and that's not part of, okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, just my comment, I'm, I'm glad I asked the question because it gives me a much better perspective on what has been done, how we've gotten to this point. When we come in for these, for these meetings, uh, it, sometimes it's like drinking through a fire hose. We're getting a lot of information very fast, very quickly. It would really behoove you, as you have now done, to provide, provide us with the, the mitigations that you've allowed that for, for, to provide for those accommodations so that we realize we're not just ignoring a lot of things to, to get to our conclusion. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I had a question regarding um, th there's no ability to relocate the uncovered parking van accessible and, or at least move the parking space down here and move the uncovered van over and put the enclosure in there. I've, I believe we'd be talking about an even more significant uh, expense if we were to have done it that way. And because? Uh, um, I, I have to tell you, I um, really because of the curbs that are in place, uh, the, the trash enclosure where it is now uh, was only moved um, about uh, maybe five feet. And this is the cost that we're talking about, the $5,000 there. So if we were to take up that trash enclosure completely mm -hmm. and place it in a different location okay. altogether, I think we'd be talking about a significantly uh, larger expense. Thank you. Thank you. Well, also, I think, and then let's say Marburg would have to come in the driveway, whereas this way they can park right on it. Well, this certainly is the closest location oh, yeah, to right. Chapala. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any public comment? Any follow-up questions for the board? Is there a motion? Do you have Jim the question? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Got it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next on the agenda, agenda is a hardship ratification for 801 Garden Street. It's south like this. Is that? Here. Um, and I, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. DeVicente to come on up, the architect involved with the project. Um, so this uh, property you may have driven by, it's 801 uh, Garden Street, just up the street here, uh, a couple of blocks. And it's uh, a building that has a... Um, Concrete, uh, uh, let's see, it's a two-story parking structure under a three-story building, three-story office building? Two stories and a basement. And a basement. Um, so the, the, one of the complexities of this particular uh, parking, trying to, trying to get the parking height, minimum parking height satisfied um, is They've sloped the the post tension concrete um, in the building that uh, that establishes the the par highest parking level, um, and it can't take any more concrete load if they try to level it out. Um, and so there were staff went out. We ha um, we had our CASPs certified access um, specialist uh, go out with a member with the um, executive director indicatives of the um, independent living resource um, help me out Elizabeth center center yeah um, 
And with Mr. DeVicente, we went out and looked at the project to see what are the options for compliance here relative to trying to get a van accessible stall. Um, and what we came up with was there, there really is no practical way to do this without demolishing um, the intermediate parking floor level and starting over again, which may or may not even provide what we need. And that's a pretty, ex a pretty excessive amount of work that would need to be done. So we tried to, we, we looked at a way, we worked with Mr. DeVicente and, and he worked with his client to find a way for us to be able to try to facilitate compliance to the greatest extent possible. Um, and that results in this request for uh, a hardship. Um, as stated in, in the staff report that's provided with the agenda in your packet, um, due to the, ex the existing post tension concrete slab, the applicant's engineer determined that um, the existing ground level park area cannot support the weight of the additional concrete slab to be required to provide a level accessible parking stall and unloading side aisle. So we found it to be technically infeasible. Uh, however, the applicant proposes to relocate the existing non-compliant unaccessible parking stalls from the ground level to the basement floor level so they can drive in down to the lowest parking level of the building. Um, and then they're going to provide um, uh, a concept similar to what you see in stairways and high rises with communications, two-way communication systems so that if something does happen and someone pulls down into the basement and there's some event, earthquake or what have you, and um, they can't get their vehicle out, they will have a way to communicate and there is an elevator serving that floor so they can get emergency personnel aware of where they're at and get the service to them to extricate them or help them get out of the building, of the basement area. And if I missed anything, Mr. DeVicente can jump in and, and help me out. But I, I think that's the, uh, in, from staff's perspective, this is the, um, best, the highest level of compliance that we can ask of the art of, that we can even um, help me out, Ed. This is the best level of compliance that's achievable, practically speaking, without removing entire floors of the building and starting over. I don't know, is that a good way to put it or do you have a better way? Yeah, it is. Uh, chair and board members and building official staff, if I could, in uh, picking up on Mr. Langhorn's recommendation of a little context and, and background here. Um, this is one of many accessible items in this building. Uh, it's a three-story mixed-use building built in the 80s uh, with some level of accessibility which doesn't comply to current standards anymore. And, and not everything was built entirely per plan either. So as we got in, um, the, the Antioch uh, University used to be in this building and they're repo we're working with the owners to reposition for individual tenants for every floor. And so one of the things we, we suggested that they do early on was to get a higher CalCASP certified uh, specialist and survey the entire building from the common area locations. And we have, we've been, so we've been working off a CalCASP report since March that was done and addressed uh, bathroom levels, bathrooms, shared bathrooms at all three floor levels, uh, all of the paths of travel throughout and the parking and access to the street. So. This component is actually about six different common area improvements that we're doing to the entire building to, to bring the building into compliance for all of the new tenants at all of the, of the different levels of the building. So we're, um, we're doing full compliance at the first level common restrooms, the second floor common restrooms, the third floor common restrooms as well. We're adding a ramp. Uh, right now there's, there's a stair entry of about five or six steps we're adding a ramp to the building, which is under actually under construction right now. It's uh, we're well past approvals from planning, and so we're well into to construction on that. Uh, we're we're also rectifying. There's a situation where there's a, a patio up front with a zero or just a just a, a no curb protection at the edge. It's another thing we're going to fix up as well and put a, put a wall, which actually would be nice aesthetically as well, uh, to help that patio edge just be more safe as well. So it's so it's a series of many improvements. Um, that we've made in the context of bringing this building into compliance. And there were, we, we found there were limitations to what we could do with the structure. Uh, that ground slab that we're talking about, the post-tension one, is actually sloped about four to 7%. Um, and it's pretty pretty remarkable, you can see it. And so when we analyze, and it's actually in, it's a very, very small drawing in uh, the first floor plan. In the upper left 
is actually the alternate. We studied it technically and drew it, what it would take on the ground floor to locate uh, an accessible space there. And the amount of buildup required was more than our structure engineer was comfortable with, which led us to find the alternate solutions downstairs in the basement. And it's a full elevator building, has full access to all levels. Uh, and this was the best working with the city staff and building official Stuffler and also uh, walking this, the, all of the options with ILRC, uh, we are all very comfortable that this was the, the best, the highest level of accessibility we could provide given the constraints. So if you have any questions about um, this particular item or any of the components we're doing, I'm happy to answer them. And I'm going to hire Ed to do the rest of the hearings on my behalf because that was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Board have any questions, comments? What would be the mitigation to the uh, to the fact that this accessible van space is not available? What would somebody with a van otherwise do? Excellent question. Um, we this is always a challenge, and mostly in a downtown where there's no parking, in our downtown projects, no parking. Generally, we, for documentation purposes, find the, the closest public accessible space, and we push, we highlight that in, um, in the plan, so at least there's an official record. In this particular case, uh, we were pleasantly surprised when we were all out there with ILRC. There's actually a curb uh, across the street, along the curb, is an accessible parking space. Um, and there's curb cuts at the two corners at that intersection. So immediately across the street is where we believe some of the van would be able to come off the side and onto a public sidewalk and gain access to the building. Thank you. It helps a lot. Any other questions? Mom? I, Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I have one question. You said uh, you're providing an air, area of rescue as well. Um, is this is this from this plan? Yes, and mm -hmm. that is what correct. What does it constitute? The area of rescue is it a full what enclosure page is that? or? What page are you on? A one hundred and one, and then there's A one hundred and two. I just wanted to know what the area of rescue because that's the safe. He was just trying to find out. Oh, it's the safe um, haven in case something really is wrong and they can't get out. So I just want to be sure they stay there. Great question. So what we have, it, it's on A101, it's in the basement, and, and you'll see where we're locating the three accessible path, stalls. Give them just a minute to look at this. Could you just hold up for a minute? Absolutely. Where am I looking at? Just we're going to bring the full-size plans out. Oh, <laughs> much better. <laughs> Like ADR here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here. Yeah. So area of rescue. Oh, here. Well, just through the. So what you'll see is we're we've placed it inside the fire rated stairwell because there's space down here and we're. Um, we have the opportunity, well, there's plenty of space under the stair because it winds under, uh -huh. but this, um, we've been toying with the idea of even eliminating this door um, to just even more define that as a space, but. And th but this would have electromagnetic hold opens on it that would. They, it's just a self-closing door. Just a self-closing door. For the door. Stairwell, why, do stairwell. Stairwell. why do you need a door there? Uh, we, it's just what's there, and when the accessible space, the pr currently existing one, is moved over to this location, mm -hmm. uh, it could be eliminated, really. But it does provide some exiting ability for the other non-compliant spaces here, so that's why we've left it at this point. Okay. But there is sufficient space under this stair for to be a, a to, proper to, area of rescue. Yeah. To at least be safe.
board have any other questions? Public comment? I'll second the motion to ratify. Should we get to All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the hardship ratification for 219 Megs Road. Would staff like to present? Yeah, Mr. Chair, this is the um, the last of the three ratifications for hardship. This is a, a fairly large multifamily project that's uh, run by the cities of Santa Barbara's Housing Authority. And um, they propose to do construction renovations and improvements of about of over $400,000. Um, and they've spent over $230,000 on barrier, barrier removal, which includes new accessible parking stalls, accessible routes, new entries, new accessible bathrooms and kitchens in two of their units. So they're definitely putting out the effort to try to increase and improve the accessibility um, on site. They ran into um, a, a shortcoming when they evaluated their covered, one of their covered parking uh, canopies and it happens to be one inch too short in one portion of the canopy where the beam comes across to support the roofing members. I think, I think it's provided in here in the back of the packet. Nonetheless, so they, they were, instead of being the, uh, what is it, 98 inches, Elizabeth? They were 97 or something in one portion. Um, to make that, to correct that would require um, either reframing the entire uh, roof or elevating, putting in new posts and lifting it or replacing the beam. And they estimated the cost would be $120,000. Back it up. Yeah, so that's, that's what their request is. They're, they're requesting that. Um, they think that it's a hardship that they should have to pay the $120,000 to increase the height of the carport one inch in one, por one portion of the carport. Is that the uh, requirement for eight feet two inches? Yes. And and so we're talking the existing is eight foot one inch. Correct. Ken, are you, is Ken not today? Is he up to date? Are you guys okay? okay oh yeah, I'm perfect. okay. I'm good. Okay, perfect. Questions from the board? One hundred and twenty thousand for the change one inch. That seems a lot of money, um, just to 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 re to redo that. Uh, we ask them. We require them to give us a construction valuation, and they gave us a construction valuation of one hundred and twenty thousand. based on a contractor bid. It's in your packet called construction valuation form. Uh, is there detail? I mean, uh, it sounds to me like what the contractor is saying is I have to take off the, completely remove the old roof, reframe, and put a new ceiling in. Is that what he's saying? I mean, there, you, there's no scope of the work here on what this 120000 would be. That's correct. There's no scope of work. Yeah. Well, I, I'm kind of an acquainter here. I can't see what difference one inch makes, but by the same token, I think that if they come up with some cost that sounds outrageous, obviously to everybody in here, because uh, it wouldn't have been brought up in the first place, they should have at least included some scope of work and why this scope is necessary to do in order to get the extra one inch. Mr. Chair, yes. 
I think Mr. Wood brings up a very valid point. If we're going to be ratifying these things, we should be ratifying something that captures the, the essence of the argument for it. Could we continue this, have them put that information into a package that we see at our next meeting? Is that a possibility or does that create another hardship? Yeah, M Mr. Chair, so the options the board has on any item that comes before them is to make a decision yay or nay or ask for additional information. So you have the option on anything brought before you to say before, I think before we make the decision, we should receive this, this, and this. And and that's fine. We'll set it up. We'll let the applicant know and or appellant know and we'll bring that back. Elizabeth, do you have something you want to offer? Elizabeth Sorgman is our certified access specialist. So I did meet with Tom Moore, who's the architect on this process, and I think what he looked at was really just listing the entire growth structure, and I didn't, um, I would, you know, didn't, I guess, ask him enough questions as to other solutions, perhaps, that he may have looked at. Um, so it is a fair question to have, you know, have us go back and ask him, well, what, you know, what is your vision? Um, but they did spend a lot of money on the total project. Um, a lot of it was really to try to bring the existing units into, a, a, you know, meeting the accessible current standards. So um, it's more a barrier removal also. So I guess I want to explain barrier removal because that came up as a topic in the last project for the trash enclosures. What the code allows an owner to do is to undertake barrier removal, um, to remove items that maybe um, don't comply with current codes, but they don't necessarily have to bring it into 100% compliance because someone's doing this voluntarily. So we never want to penalize someone for not um, completely making something totally accessible if they've undertaken you know, that project just for the sole purpose of barrier removal. Um, the housing authority encompassed a lot of parts to this project, and so I couldn't say that this was strictly barrier removal, but a lot of it did end up being that. Mr. Chair? Yes, Chair. I appreciate Mrs. Horgman's comments, but I do worry that uh, we're talking about a carport. Realizing they've done a lot of work, realizing we're one inch shy, and there's a, an obvious question here as to why can't it be jacked up an inch, and how would that come to cost us $120,000. And it would just help us, it help our, because we don't want to be just voting these things blindly. We want to be sure that uh, uh, there's enough information to support what we're doing here. That's all. And I, I'm really happy with just about everything I've seen so far, but. Uh, no, I really appreciate your input and your questions. This is exactly what you are charged to do. So um, we're happy to comply and ask for additional questions. This doesn't have any impact on their project. The carport is existing. So there isn't any, um, you know, you're not holding them up, you're not penalizing them. They can come back to this meeting and they can explain to you how they came up with their valuations and those are all really good questions. Mr. Chair? Thank you. If they could just add that to what they have already, I think we'd be set to go, I think. Okay. Um, I, I have um, a question, Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Um, one, one of my questions would be ADA's requiring eight foot two inches versus eight foot one inch. It needs an, an inch more. And um, you're proposing to, your other proposal is to just leave it as is, or? So part of their project included adding another, a total of three accessible parking stalls. So we do have an open space van accessible stall. We mm -hmm. have a guest accessible parking stall okay. and then another resident. The new codes require that every type of parking be provided an accessible um, stall. And because this was built way back when, um, it didn't necessarily meet that requirement. And based on the amount of work that was being done, then it triggered us having to look at their existing parking. And unfortunately, again, it was one inch short and they mm -hmm. may have some other options, but they didn't really explore that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So, so at this point, I think we would ask for <clears throat> more information. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, as the secretary to the just uh, to the board, I would recommend that someone make a motion, and in their motion, they state what it is they would like to have brought back to the board, 
and then get a second and then vote on that and then we have it in the record that this is the official decision of the board and direction of the board um, some someone like to make a motion toward getting more information um, to I would like to propose to move that we have more information so that we can look at this project and they can explain and then the next time we meet they bring that we bring that back to the table I'll second that favor for, for clarification purposes mr. chair so um, I think for, for clarification purposes um, I would like the motion maker to um, just confirm that we're asking them to come back with more information about how they uh, calculated one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for the one inch increase yeah, that's why is it a hundred and twenty five thousand yep. dollar increase and for that small measure? Th so. Thank you. That'll help us and, and and include is it does it involve new roofing or new the whole new roof or are we going to just structurally, you know, set it up higher an explanation and, of the scope yeah, of work yeah. and okay. the existing roof. Mr. Chair, for the comment, it, when they come back, if they could provide any other evidence of mitigations in lieu of this, that would be helpful to our decision as well. We're asking, who was the second, Marcia? Yeah. Yes. So at this point, you could take a vote on that. I kind of butt in skied into your call for a vote. Yeah. Call the vote. Call the vote. We have a motion. Right? Motion for it. Uh, second. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Voted aye. Yep. Hmm. You can wrap any it other up. Qu yeah. Any other questions, comments? Anyone would like to make? I wanted yep. to let you guys know the next meeting is scheduled for December third, which is a Tuesday. Thursday. Sorry, Thursday at two thirty. Um, as of right now, we don't have anything before the board, so I will let you know for sure once we have something, whether or not we will continue with that meeting. So there will be no meeting in November? This is November's meeting. Oh, this, this is we November. had that's two right. in October that's right. that's to make right. up two for November's. Okay. okay. Thank you. We'll probably get this back. <laughs> hope so. Hang on to it. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> on favor? Aye. 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 Hi. Did you say November third? December. December third. Excuse me. Elizabeth, this helps so much. December second. I, yeah. I can remember what this used to be like. <laughs> or December first. Third. third. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. Okay. Today's Tuesday. Right. Yeah. We. Yeah. This is Thank an oddball. Thank you. Don't ever feel bad about asking.